Hello, fellow humans. Welcome to a new series called Books I Love. Uh, my wife and I have a sizable photo book collection. Prior to our recent move, we probably had around 500 photo books. It's now down to about 350. We had some tough decisions to make, but uh, I think the photo book is the best way to experience photography. I th think it was Jerry Badger who said that photography is a story best told in book form. Don't hold me to that, but I love that expression. I love that saying, and I think it's absolutely true. Some of the books I have, are probably books that you have, but I think I've got quite a few others that you may not know about. And I just wanna break down why I like these books so much. Uh, this is a book, this week's first installment, is a book called Long Story Bit by Bit, Liberia Retold by Tim Hetherington. And Tim was a, a photographer, a really respected, highly respected guy who was killed in 2011 in the war in Libya. He was covering the war uh, and he was right next to someone named Chris Hondros, another highly respected photographer. And they either got hit by a mortar round or an RPG, but they were both killed. And uh, there's a documentary film on, I wanna say it's Amazon Prime, that's called Hondros, which is about his life. And that is a well worth your time and effort if you wanna see what high level photojournalists, what their lives are like. He was a, a really interesting guy, very intelligent, very committed, and Tim was as well. Tim is also known for being nominated for an Academy Award with Sebastian Younger for a film called Restrepo, which was about outpost Restrepo in the Korangal Valley in Afghanistan. It was a documentary film. It was also made into a book called Infidel, which was published by Chris Boot, who's an amazing publisher out of London that came out, I wanna say, 2010. So this book, Liberia, or long story bit by bit, Liberia Retold, is not as well known and it's it's a puzzling to me because it's such a well done book and to me it shows off Tim's talent as a photographer better than anything else I've seen of his but before I break down and show you from a top down camera view why I like this so much a book like this you need to know that this is not the work of one person yes Tim made these photographs and Tim did this book and Tim spent 8 years in West Africa four in Liberia alone now, that's mystical to me for, for a variety of reasons. Growing up in America, you never hear anything about West Africa or a particular country. So to, to invest in a story like this, and he was from the UK, he was not from the States, but it doesn't really matter. To invest in a region like West Africa, where it's a story that much of the world looks and says, why should we be interested in this? And to go there in the first place, and then commit to being there for eight years, four years on one country, I have such a high level of respect for that. Tenacity in photojournalism, tenacity in documentary photographer is an absolute must, and he exemplified what that was. But a book like this is not just him. It is from a team of high-powered, very talented people. In this case, and I want to bring attention to them off the bat before we even start looking at the book. So this was published by Umbridge, and it was published by Umbridge Editions, and I just want to run through this, this list of contributors because it's very important that you know them as well. So the publisher was Nan Richardson, the assistant editor was Ashley Singley. The book design came from Una Kim. Production was Jennifer Kakaletris. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm sorry, Jennifer. And the copy editor was Layla Love and Amanda Bullock. And this is Umbridge Editions from New York. It was distributed by Consortium Books and Distribution. And also, uh, that was in, uh, in Canada, US and Canada, and distributed in Europe by Turnaround Publishing Services. And this was printed and bound in China, which is very common with high-level photography books. You have China, you have Italy, and you have uh, Iceland, among other places that are high-level printing centers where a lot of books are done. So let me show you this book. Let me tell you why I like it. And I hope you like this series because I got a lot more books to show you. All right, so let's take a look at this book and why I like it so much. So again here, Tim Hetherington is the author, Long Story Bit by Bit, Liberia Retold. This is an Umbridge, published by Umbridge, which we talked about before. Now what's interesting is the cover image, which is a landscape image, um, isn't necessarily that reflective of what the content of the book is. So you could look at that one of two ways. You could say, well, that's maybe a deceptive cover image. Maybe someone looks at this and says, this is a landscape book. I like it because it doesn't tell you too much. It doesn't pigeonhole what's about to follow in the book because what's about to follow is comprehensive and it's very unlike what this picture is, although this is an important part of the country itself. So let's dive in here and have a little look-see. Um, this is a, an essay that was written, a foreword that was written by Tim. And I like what I like about this is the type treatment and also the, the column space. You have this nice empty space here in the center and you've got basically a little more than a two column uh, spread here when it comes to the copy. I really like how this type treatment is done and I like the layouts of these pages. 
got your half title page, and bang, this book starts with this image, which I think is a remarkable image, especially because remember, he's using a Hasselblad or, or some sort of square format camera. With a Hasselblad, this to me looks like a picture that would have required a, a close-up of bellows to shoot that close, which is not easy. And with a bellows on a Hasselblad, it means you're literally a matter of inches away from this person's face. But in terms of sucking you into this story, I think this image is remarkable. Now there's one thing about this that I'm gonna bring up now. There's one thing about this book that makes me go back and forth whether or not I like it. And it's this small white border at the top here on these images. I go back and forth. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. That's the one design element that I kind of go, mm, I don't know if I'd have done that. Again, I'm not a book designer, so the designer probably doesn't care. With an image like this, it works really well because the image is so dark, it helps contain it. But there are images in the book we'll see later where there's a, a very light section of the image that bleeds into the border so you can't see where the border starts and the image stops. That's my one sort of mystery about this book. So as we get into it, you're seeing, you're going from humanity to landscape, the ocean. This is what I would call an urban landscape. And again, this could be a single image run large or it could be two images split here. Um, really nice though. You're starting to sort of get closer and closer to the city itself. The caption treatment is very nice. I like the font size, the type size. Uh, it's very easy to read. It's well done, beautiful. Again, a little bit of landscape, but boom, this is where things start to take a turn. There's a couple of things about this spread that I think are really important. One is the repetition of shapes on both pages. So you have the human figures here reflected also in the human figure here. I think that's very smart. That's a great picture pairing, but you also have color. You have the colors here represented back and forth. Um, you have a, a, a strong diagonal here, a dynamic element leading your picture, your eye into the frame. That's called good editing and good sequencing. Again, nice color palettes are the same, uh, nice balance. Now, remember this, we're gonna come to something about this a little more in general, but I wanna speak specifically to these pictures about graffiti and writing on the walls, but look how beautiful that is. And now what you're seeing is, you're getting, now you're starting to get into the story. Right? And you've got really simple but beautiful type treatment. You've got nice borders on the top and bottom. And what you have here is basically a, 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 a wildlife photograph. But watch what happens now. Now you're into the humanity of the story. And this is the beginnings of what looks like a protest or a battle beginning to form. Now you're into what I would call basically hardcore journalism. You have people running for their lives and you have a mortar uh, basically a mortar battle going on. So chances are, if these guys are firing mortars from this position, there's probably small arms fire and other mortars coming back. So this is dangerous, people are running. To go from wildlife, landscape, urban landscape photography to this is very, very challenging. And again, shooting with a square format camera, uh, not easy. More writing on the wall, which we're gonna talk about more in a minute. Let's get a little further into this. Um, th this you get to this section, and this is where, to me, this book takes on whole new meaning. So I already know in the first 20 pages, his skill as a photographer, it's very high. He's a very good photographer. But now we have interviews. This is a guy named Zubin Cooper, who's a media producer. This is, a whole, this is an interview with him. To, to compile this kind of data takes a remarkable amount of time, focus, and energy. And a lot of photographers are just not willing to do that. They're fixated on the actual imagery. But what Tim is doing here is, is doing a, a country study, which is no easy task by any stretch. This is a monumental undertaking. So you have one interview, you have two interviews, you have three interviews. Again, I'm just stressing the fact that one, this is a monumental commitment and amount of work. I have tremendous respect for that. I also love the treatment of the type here. I love the spacing. I love the, the white space. I love everything about it. You've, you've gone to a small square image and, instead of a, a you know, half page style image. Again, more writing, we're gonna talk about this in a minute. You're talking about humanity, going from detail to mid-range imagery. A um, Little bit of dicey situation here. And now we're getting to something, beautiful portrait. I mean, really beautiful, solid. No, this guy knows, not this guy in the photograph, but Hetherington knows how to shoot in good light. He recognizes good light. But look at this. So now we've got a spread, small squares, six to the page, all with writing on the wall, which is a very telling aspect of what's happening in this country. But here's the photographer angle on this. When you're shooting a Hasselblad or a square format camera, medium format, you have so few images per roll that it's often hard when you're looking at stuff like this, 
you kind of feel in some ways that you might be burning film when you don't need to burn it. But when, when you've done it for four years over the country, what you end up with is a subcategory of picture inside the photo essay that is incredibly powerful on its own. That is such a smart way of photographing and something I really love about this book. So let's go on here. You're getting really tragic stuff. You know, you've got bodies in the streets. The violence is, is going crazy. But um, there's a couple of editing and sequencing pairings that I absolutely love, and then we're going to end this. This is a wonderful pairing. Again, good editing, good sequencing, where you've got the painted representative uh, representation of this man, and then you have the actual man sitting here. That is a beautiful, beautiful pairing. And there's a couple of other, so that's a nice little more interviews, more interviews, more interviews. Again, I just can't imagine the amount of work that went into this. Um, there's one pairing in particular here I love, right here. Again, this is where good editing, good sequencing, and a team of people putting this stuff together is why these books become so great. Is I love this here reflected here in this. This is what I would call, like for a lot of people, this is gonna be, they're gonna overlook this in the editing process. But for a good editor and a good sequencer, a good photographer putting this together, that's why these books are, uh, they're better, they're greater than the sum of the parts because there's so much talent involved in putting this together. So in essence, that is why I love this book. It goes on and on and on. There's so much work in here. And there's a few, last few things I wanna point out. More interviews which is just, again, astounding, such a, diff a diverse range of photographs. But also at the end of this book, you have a really beautiful poem. You've got sort of a, a scene setting, beautiful warm tone landscape that sort of brings your, your mentality back up, like there's hope for this scenario. But you also have a short history of Liberia. And again, this is incredible detail in a timeline from 1816, to 2007. Now, why is this so important? It's so important because like I said before, there's a lot of people in the world that don't know anything about West Africa. They don't know anything about Liberia. They don't have any interest in this. As an American coming up through the public education system, you don't ever learn about places like Liberia. So me reading this book, I don't know the history here. This is an essential part of the process is for me to be able to, to understand the history of the, of the country before I get involved. And then you have caption footnotes, et cetera. Again, massive amounts of data, just a beautiful, well done publication that is definitely worth your time and money.